मदीयृदयाकाशे सदानंदमयो गुरु उदेदु सतत सम्यक स्वात्मानंद प्रबोधग हरि 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 ओम तस् जय गुरु जय गुरु जय गुरु द होल इवेंट द थ्री डे इवेंट विच रिक्वेड एक्चुअली फाइव और सिक्स डेज from our side to complete the visit of what happened in dikshin khanda now both ma and namrata have been telling me that i should speak to all of you in general again perhaps giving all the details of what happened in my mind and i what i think about the whole para brahma dham yatra after the program we started returning from shanti nikayan we got into the aircraft and at one point of time ma sat on the chair next to me she was sitting on the other side this intermediate chairs that seat all also was booked to avoid the crowding so she sat and then told me swami ji what are you feeling about the whole yatra what are the thoughts feelings and responses that you have you want me to speak about it yes then she said i would like to communicate it so i started speaking in bengali and she was copying it making the necessary corrections to make the bengali in its proper form so i thought i shall tell you all about the thoughts i had in my mind this dikshin khanda visit was not supposed to be including me or even ma swami ji was going to jamshedpur for his annual retreat program because he was going there and the construction was still in progress i felt particularly that swami ji should go to nutun swami ji should go to dakshin kanda and see the work done in time so that before finishing the whole building any kind of improvements changes and alterations can be brought about for that a visit by him was definitely necessary that was decided upon and he proceeded to jamshedpur then swami ji felt that because it is the question of finishing the building ma may have something to say and i felt namrata also has ideas of planning and processing etc so both of them should also go so arrangements were made for books tickets for them while the subject was being discussed i somehow felt i shall also come why i said i shall also come because in my mind the thought was the building construction will be over in another few months after the construction may quite possibly we will go together and inaugurate it and come back when the work is over and the purnashram renewed purnashram is inaugurated what about looking after the whole building and there should be some kind of a holy action taking place every day like lighting a lamp which they were already doing in the present improvised place now the place will become more important and it has to be more vibrant particularly reflecting the great ascetic austere traditions that baba by his whole life of austerity contemplation and spiritual vibration generated and preserved baba lived there for decades quite a number of decades and he was simply sitting alone solitary life sedentary life 
I have seen him always standing on his head, Shirshasan, and that too for several hours. He also knows to take sitar and invert it and then play while standing on his head. Otherwise he will play harmonium and sing or he will play sitar. He would go down only for taking bath and taking food and answering the calls of nature. Can you imagine a person like this? I believe in our scriptural language it is called Naishkarmya Siddhi. Naishkarmya means karma, nishkarma, naishkarmya. It means that kind of a perfection where one does not feel like doing any kind of a secular physical activity. The entire system gets reconciled to a life of inner contemplation, contemplation, contemplative stillness and whatever that means and brings. It is something very, very amazing. There may be so many sannyasins and ascetics living in the Himalayan regions, but I am wondering whether such a person can be found anywhere. After seeing Baba, right at the first sight, I developed a fondness for him. He was brought to our flat in, on Ritchie Road in Baliganj in Calcutta. My brother, elder brother, was very much interested in sadhus and sannyasins. He was always thinking that the secret of spirituality lies with an ascetic, an austere person. That person should be an enlightened person with full spiritual enlightenment. So he was looking for, looking for. One day in my flat, one ascetic came climbing the steps. He was wearing only a cloth below his hip, right from the hip, and that too very narrow. And he had a stick like Y, a yoga danda. He tap, 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 he climbed and asked, is Ram, Ram, he, he, he asked in Hindi whether my brother's name, mentioning it, he said, is he here? No. Immediately he turned back and went. And I did not know the language to talk to him. He was speaking Hindi. I didn't know a word of Hindi at that time. So I was wondering, suppose any other sadhu comes here. Unless he speaks English, how can I interact with him? I was also not able to speak English at that time very fluently. I had gone to Calcutta for the first time. So, to communicate in a language you must have a special experience also. We lack, we only study English but we don't speak. So the next news I got from my brother was that a Sadhu Baba is coming here. He is a great Siddha Purusha. He is coming. I asked my brother, will he speak English? Oh, he would speak beautiful English. So I felt a relief in my mind. I can at least talk to him something. Thus, Baba with his skin and bone and with a white shirt climbed the staircase with sitar, the musical instrument in his hand. He was conducted to the room we had set up for him to sit. In that room there was no cot, he was supposed to be lying on the ground. When I think of it now, I feel very bad. Why did not my brother think about the conveniences required minimum for him? This is what I feel now. But I don't know whether it was necessary because I found Baba also living not, lying not on a cot. He was lying on the ground in his own poor Nashrama. So it was all right. He came up, walked into the room, sat there after keeping his sitar on the ground. Then my brother told me, he is a great Siddha Purusha, prostrate before him and seek Brahmajnana. I did not know what was Brahmajnana. Siddha Purusha word also perhaps I heard for the first time. So I prostrated. You know, our prostration is something very, very special and spectacular. 
we fall on the ground stretching the body fully and resting on the back of the foot we extend our hand and touch the feet of the person whom we prostrate before i did it baba lifted me up with my cheeks and then as i was getting up i was standing on my heels he kissed me on my forehead that one act of his lifting me up fondly and kissing on my forehead it was something extremely new to me i was the last child of my mother we are seven children the first son my eldest brother i have not seen at all he had left home either before my birth or soon after my birth all these years 91 years 90 years we have no news about him so that is by the way neither my father nor my mother nor my elder ones sisters brothers etc i did not think that anyone had given me this kind of a reception or acknowledgement any time so i was wondering here is an old strange man he doesn't know me he has no relationship with me how is it that he lifts me up so fondly and gives me a kiss on the forehead what is this so what is the secret of human relationship what all can it imply how many different facets does it have these were the imaginations in my mind but the long and short of the whole interaction is that my heart and mind developed a fondness towards baba and that fondness continues to be the same even now i don't think it has either increased or decreased whatever measure and depth of fondness i had and whatever naturality i felt in the whole process that was then and now absolutely alike i think baba stayed in our flat for a month or so his room was almost closed because we were also living there there was an interconnecting door so that door was closed so that he would be very comfortable and silent my brother used to interact with him very closely all within the closed door so i would not know anything about it in a few days i found that my brother was initiated by baba the first time a word initiation one person initiating another in the traditional language it is called diksha so he gave diksha to my brother what was this diksha and how it is administered i did not know because it was done in full privacy i was performing my sandhya vandan in the traditional manner and whatever i do baba would have seen because it is it was a small flat a three roomed flat so nobody can do anything without he being seen by the others so he was very impressed apparently by my traditional sandhya vandana japa etc every day i was doing it he must have seen it also how regular faithful and fastidious i was in doing all these religious routines one day however i went to him and asked him baba i am how to concentrate the mind so he told me concentration concentration it is the last thing in human life and what was the next sentence he said he said you are too young so i had two points of enlightenment for me concentration was the last thing to be had in human life and i was too young for it so the chapter remained closed there was no question of baba either telling me something or giving me anything in the way of diksha or initiation i did not question it or seek any further clarification i continued to be what i was observing whatever was going on 
and i wrote to our family in kerala whatever i saw and whatever was taking place i have always an open mind maybe i am dangerously open sometimes so with my openness innocence and simplicity i used to convey all that was going on in the flat home he stayed for more than a month and then returned somehow because of my fondness for baba i used to communicate to him every like time i wrote fast would come his reply he used to write only on postcards one postcard will sometimes contain 20 or 30 lines sometimes he would write five or six lines he will say you are he will put u and one r two letters so writing so many lines in a postcard and also five or six lines and a bit abbreviated letters etc it was always a piece of <laughs> interest and also enrichment for me i continued my fondness and communication with baba and then i was continuing with my sandhya vandanam also i cannot say how many years passed maybe a year or so one day i was performing my sandhya vandana after that i stood up for my japa no after japa i stood up and we have a particular ritualistic process vedic ritual then i was chanting <coughs> dheya sada sabidra mandala madhyavarti narayana sarasi jasana sannivishta every day i used to chant it two times at least morning and evening that day it so happened i felt that i was chanting the shloka but the mind was not concentrated or fixed on it chanting all right but not fixed you should observe me well dheya sada sabidra mandala madhyavarti narayana sarasi jasana sannivishta the shloka is long these are only two lines i found that i was not concentrate so i started taking up the line again every time reducing the letter letters dheya sada sabidra mandala mad no concentration dheya sada sabidra man no 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 to my disappointment dheya sada sa are you following me every time i was trying to i understood that my mind was not going along with the letters so whenever i found it i stopped it and every time i stopped it after a shorter spell then at one point of time dhe i stopped right then my whole body was surcharged with a spiritual electrical blissful vibration the whole body it was a tremor i also found two beautiful red orbs two eyes and they were at a distance and the eyeball was vibrating tremendously so i focused on the eye, on the on what i saw and that sight was coming nearer and nearer and nearer and nearer and at one point of time it entered me through the eyeballs and that was the pinnacle of the vibrational spell it was too much to bear but very blissful exhilarating i completed my performance that ritualistic performance that day then i wrote a letter to baba baba the time has come for me to take diksha so i am coming to you and you should give me diksha this is how i wrote <clears throat> 
I don't know whether he replied me or not. He was supposed to come to Baranagar within Calcutta. So I went to Baranagar, Baranagar with a dhoti because I was wearing a pan. I went there. About this I think I have written so I don't repeat that. So he gave me diksha and the diksha intensified my vibration. My whole thighs as I was sitting was vibrating very, very pronouncedly, in a pronounced manner. Then after the diksha I said, I will not stay here, I will go back to my flat, I will come tomorrow morning. He first of all said, you must, sit, you must be here for three days, why are you going? Baba, I am after all a South Indian, so I shall go, I will come in the morning. Did not say anything. Did not express any unpleasantness or disapproval also. He said, you should have stayed here. You should stay for three days. Then I went. That day evening, my regular sadhana, dikshita sadhana started. That night, taking sufficient precautions, I used to do my sadhana in my, in shavasana. Shavasana means completely lying. Then I don't have the responsibility or of keeping the body erect. No strain. But people generally say they will sleep. I have not encountered sleep during such meditative spells. So I was lying. You know, I got absorbed and spent about two, three hours that day. So you can imagine my relationship with Baba leading up to this wonderful sadhana, diksha and absorption. And it is this diksha and sadhana that made me what I am, what I was ever since then. You know for any seeker of truth, spiritual person, the first is a biological birth from the mother and father, about which we don't know. Mother tells us that you are born of me, I am your mother, and this is your father. We accept it implicitly, but we have not seen our birth, nor are we going to see our death. Both these are attributes made by the others about us. That biological birth is followed by growth, Mother nurses us, gives us nutrition. We are admitted to schools. Until we become an adult, mother continues to look after us. And we are sent to schools and other academic centers to have knowledge. But not knowledge is only giving us object knowledge. Knowledge about the object, sensory, visible world. But the greater part of the entire creation is within our body, invisible to the senses, inaccessible to anything objective or gross. That part of education we don't get anywhere. Actually spiritual education is that. Spiritual knowledge is that. That is the one called Paravidya. And the academic knowledge is called Aparavidya. In that even the Vedas and Shastras are included. They are also Abhara Vidya, inferior knowledge. When one goes to the Guru and seeks acceptance in his hand, Sadguru, and Sadguru accepts him, that marks the second real birth of a person. You can call it in one sense the second birth, in another sense, the real optional birth. So my biological birth from my mother, father, parents and the optional spiritual birth in the hands of Baba. I have nothing to tell you about the earlier life, that is Purvashrama life. But you know me and I also know myself as what I am after I have had my birth in the hands of my Guru. Gurudev Baba. You know my devotion to Baba, it was not very demonstrative. 
but it was so so only wholesome what is guru bhakti and what all can guru bhakti work and display you can see from my life i have only guru bhakti and guru bhakti alone after meeting baba i never wanted to meet anybody else at all for any purpose and this devotion to baba is something very very wholesome very excellent and perhaps unparalleled i could see right before me a, a person who has attained self realization in its fullness arjuna asked krishna who is the siddha prajna who is the siddha di etc and krishna gave answers but here i saw right in my front all the attributes that you can give to a self knower the siddha prajna the siddha di the nirvikalpa samadhi sta every attribute that you want to give the jivan mukta jivan mukta in the highest order and level everything i could see i had the freedom to talk to him in any manner and he would never reserve a reply whatever i asked for he would answer so that freedom to ask when i used to go to dikshin khanda he used to lay i would be almost near his feet sometimes stroking the feet and he would lay we would be conversing also so all the freedom i was sleeping also in the same room sometimes when i used to get up at night i would see baba standing on his head it may be 2 o'clock in the morning 3 o'clock like that i have seen him play harmonium and sing 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 always stand on the head stand on the head for hours and hours so i don't have to ask who is sthita prajna who is sthita di no it was right evidently before me and our association was very very close we we brought him home to kerala he spent one or two months there he was living there and in all these interactions every aspect of self knowledge and fulfillment by this knowledge was repeatedly and in a confirmatory manner exposed before us and we could know you can imagine that very soon in a matter of 2 or 3 years i don't know how much i decided to leave everything in pursuit of this this wonderful knowledge if a person has this knowledge of the self our shastras say that that nistudihi nar namaskaro niswadha kare evacha do not go on praising deity after deity deity after deity do not offer prostrations before so many thinking that many gods and many goddesses are there you know we have t- 33 crores of gods and goddesses never do it and do not offer pinda and dudaga for your departed souls nistudir nirnamaskaro niswadhakara evacha chalajala nigedascha yadihi yadrichi go bhave you have only two abodes the movable body and the immovable self get out be an ascetic depend upon chance or providence my dear children this was too much of a call before me i was reading our scriptures upanishads pragarana granthas bhagavad gita and the others and the call i found was this your place is not in calcutta in the corporate world what are you doing with all the experience that you have the knowledge that you have the diksha that you got the sadguru that you have who is by your side are you to be here 
I went and wrote out a re- resignation in the office. At one time I needed a professional spell. Now I feel I should retire from it. Allow me to retire. I am going to enter, embrace the ascetic life. So they gave me a beautiful acknowledgement and all that, send off. So I left. When I left Calcutta, <laughs> it was very interesting. Where shall I go? I was not going to a place where my guru had built up an institution. It is not that. I was simply going, 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 where? Nowhere. Nowhere. Only the streets of India welcomed me and the invisible providence shielded me and shaded me. I had no plan. I had nothing. I left everything. What can be there for such a person as a possession? So nothing was there. So you should imagine what made me do so. Only my Baba and my devotion to him. The entire subject was discussed. He was in Calcutta, closer to us, living in South Calcutta. He gave me the name Bhuma. He also gave me the Geru address. I shaved off my hair and beard, wore the Geru, and with the name I moved on. It was a journey in spiritual infinite space. No aim. To be planless was my plan. To have no aim was my aim. Chala jala nigedascha yadir yadir shigo bhavet. Can you imagine? This is what Guru Bhakti can do. This is what our Shastras can, can inspire you for. This is what knowledge properly instilled and developed can work in a seeker of truth in making him a knower. What do you think? I think every one of you should think about the whole episode as I narrate it for you and learn whatever you want to learn and also pursue that learning without any reservation, without any semblance of delicacy. Don't call it courage. Call it, call it the compulsion of knowledge, the persuasion of knowledge, the inspiration knowledge can give. The world is not a void. Providence is not unresourceful. God is great. You are living in the world of God, in the world of providence. Anywhere you go, you have the protection by providence, especially for those who renounce everything and who lay at the feet of the infinite, embraced by Him, embracing Him. I think, my dear souls, you have to learn a lot from this. My Baba remained completely participating in whatever I do, supporting what I do, supporting what I did. I knew that I belonged to Tirtha Parampara from Baba and he named me as Bhuma and gave me the Giru address. What more do you want? When will a Sadguru make a disciple like this? Be, be a nothing. Be a nobody. Wanting nothing, having nothing, and being nothing. Only to be constantly embraced and protected by providence. It's a wonderful fruition, my dear souls. In 1979, Baba left his embodiment. Naturally, there was no occasion for me to go to Dakshinagata. Forty years passed. Forty years passed. And then, 
members belonging to his family initially decided later on cancel later on confirmed etc and they decided to hand over purnashrama to me but i don't have to me means to our ashram narayan ashram tapavanam a trust as you know i sent nutun swami ji to calcutta to sign on my behalf in registering the whole process so the registration took place naturally we had now some ideas otherwise there was no idea the purnashram mud wall house had already collapsed and nobody was living there naturally the question arose are we going to leave it like that or can we do something to perpetuate to commemorate and also to somehow bring about a place and a board after baba to be reflecting and radiating what all my baba represented what all he contained and what all he wished when we went in, in 2018 architect had been contacted and he had made out a plan this plan was showed to the people who had assembled there and said we are going to construct you may see whatever is going to take place we went there primarily for conducting an annavastra dana satram that continued for two or three years i don't know how many then corona interfered ultimately so many clearances had to be made clearances so far as the land was concerned approval for construction etc all this over a few months earlier the construction started now the first floor roof the final one has already been cast the wall work on the ground floor partly done so an inspection was necessary and if any modifications are needed that also they also those also have to be incorporated that is why swami ji was supposed to go so my mind started thinking the construction will be over in a few months we may also go and inaugurate it and come back but who will look after the place keeping in tune with baba's life baba's unparalleled ascetic and austere life and contemplation they are already lighting a lamp every day keeping the place etc wherever they are but when a beautiful building is completed it requires full care and attention who will do it the whole property the abode is in dakshin kanda it will remain in dakshin kanda forever if we are managing it and using it well and good if no manager is there no usage is there it will automatically become the property of the government nobody is going to take away the building this is a point i emphasize everywhere where we go i said it in delhi i also said it in jamshedpur i also said in dakshin kanda about this so i thought my presence this time along with nutin swami ji and ma would intensify the process of having a group of people associated with us who will look after the purnashrama in line with our disciplines ascetic and austere traditions we are ascetics and we are austere to the core and whatever we do will be an abode of austerity an abode of ascetic brilliance and dissemination in keeping in tune with in keep, keeping in tune with these it should be better possible we had already started the sunday satsang continuously after mass laying the foundation ceremony so that satsang inaugurated a kind of a link between us between and dikshin kanda so i thought i would go there talk to the people as baba had wished baba had said that these villagers know nothing they are simple and innocent people with devotion you should tell them about brahmavidya and the pursuit and promotion of brahmavidya 
unless they are enlightened they will have no ground at all nothing to hold on to so this always was in my mind so we thought we will i thought i will go and spend 3 days with them only sitting by their side not doing anything else previously when we went as villagers some of them took interest in coming this time it was specifically told to them that swami ji is coming and his intention is to have some satsang with all of you i think they did somewhat a degree of publicity so that many people could participate in it and i feel the three day program went off quite well i was very simple very innocent very open all of them were smilingly smilingly with joy and fervor listening to whatever i said absorbing <clears throat> i was telling them about what what is bhagwan what is bhakti and how bhakti grows in a man as bhakti grows the world is distanced and god nears and the climax and culmination of bhakti is when bhagwan takes residence in your heart you invite him and install him in your heart no distance between you and god god surrounds you and interpenetrates you he embraces you you also embrace him let there be oneness between you and god not a distance you don't have to even call him you don't have even to chant him you don't want even to say god because god alone is do you about remind about yourself do you remind about your mother and father then why should you remind yourself about god the whole existence is god the whole the whole prevalence is god you are inside the mind the intelligence and ego are the expressions of god and consciousness alone so i took up a portion from the navayogi dialogue from the 11th skanda of shrimad bhagavatam and told them this is how the name of god properly uttered transforms the mind of man it starts generating devotion bhakti dispassion virakti and bhagavat sakshatkara inside you this is the way it works your devotion to god must grow grow god is not a body he is not a form think of the sky to be like god now all these truths i was speaking with a lot of force and realism somehow i was speaking in bengali alone rarely asking ma to give me a word when i wanted she would speak so the interaction was only that the manner in which they all clustered together we went to purnashram paid our respect then came back and the function was in ananda bhavan finally i told them what did i tell them <clears throat> they were asking me after purnashrama is completed swami ji will you not come and stay here at least for one month let me see i said this one month was uttered to them by told me by a woman in 2018 when we went there she said swami ji you should come here at least stay for one month up to one month we shall look after you and we can hear you understand you the same one month they repeated this time also <clears throat> i said i was born in parlikad where naimisharinyam has come up but according to the tradition and the principles of sanyasa a sanyasin is supposed to leave the birthplace and also blood relations generally sanyasins become so fresh from brahmacharya if anybody has become after getting married 
then he must leave the matrimonial relationships also birth place so i told my brothers that i will help you to establish this ashram but i will go they did not perhaps think that i would do it so i left i came to a place i wanted to stay somewhere where nobody had lived earlier narayan ashram adapavanam on the slope of pandavagiri is such a place providentially it came to me my brother purushottam swami ji and his dharma padni both of them seeing me inspired by that they were also initiated by baba they also took up sanyasa with three sons three daughters children studying in school classes so swami ji <coughs> we formed a hindra vothana pradeshtan hnp and wanted me to the president of it thereby he made me involved in the activities we are doing we were doing in parlikal the people of parlikal are very fond of me all the houses there associated with us now this place i have lived here for 60 years they are also very fond of me so i have two places now two abodes now i told them with the construction of purnashrama and my arrival here and the time i have spent with you and the type of fondness and bond that have that have been formed i think this dakshit khanda will be a third place all the three alike like a triangle my f- heart will continue to foster dakshin khanda and the dakshin khanda residents with the same love fondness fervor and bond we shall be interested in the welfare of dakshin khanda and to the extent it is possible for us to help and participate in the growth we shall try you let us know keep in contact with us so this is what i said <clears throat> so two places were around me now a third place also has come this visit we made for me it is a great tapo yatra a tapasya not only a tapasya yatra it is a tapo maya samarpana of my samarpana to whom to my baba my gurudev see i have descended from him then i started moving about like a university for two years i was giving jnana yajna conducting jnana yajna in kerala from trivandrum in the south to trichambaram in the north then i moved to chennai madras at that time then i went to jamshedpur i spoke under a shamiana put up by a house mr verma and nandini verma i spoke in malayalam people who found that i was talking they said swami ji should conduct a talk in english then only we can hear so i began my first english lecture there in jamshedpur then people started calling me to different places all these are after the descent from baba going to other places now this time i went to baba my very source and dikshin kanda the purnashrama about you understand the difference between the two in the whole of my life extending to 67 years as an ascetic i think this is the most profoundly significant event going to dikshin khanda and fulfilling the wishes of baba by sitting in the midst of the village residents talking to them and sharing with them whatever i have got from my baba i have told them i will tell you i will come to dikshin khanda and tell you what i heard and gained from baba 
None of them has seen apparently Baba, or very rarely one or two has seen, have seen. So for them Baba is a figure. So a question was taken up. This abode which is going on there, going on, is it not something very personal? What do we have to do there? We can understand if a temple is built, where all people can go and worship. But this is not such a temple. This is commemorating a person who was living in our village by those people who are his disciples. What do we have to do there? So one person said, you should give us an answer to tell them when people ask. So I told them. What did I say? I have told you earlier. These are all very cardinal very, very cardinal. Our whole Hindu society and culture have survived because of two parallel institutions. One is a temple where a deity is installed, where hundreds, thousands, lakhs and millions go. But it is a mute deity. No deity knows when a devotee goes to that deity. You go there and you offer your prayer. You have the fulfillment and expectation. You come back. Deity doesn't know. If you have any questions, no. Even the installation of temple, how it is to be done, why it is done, and how to arrange the worship, perform the worship, these are all to be told by men, not by the deity. Parallelly you have an ashram, where an ascetic lives. The moment you go there, he will see you and say, My dear son, please come. Come. This is your home. Stay here as long as you want. What do you want? Tell me. So somebody who accosts you, who tells you what you want. Now, unless both the institutions are there, in the ashrams perhaps, Hundreds, five hundreds and a thousand will go. But it is those that determine the fate of even temples in our land. Thousands and lakhs of our temples we have. Everything is done by the human. The word God is an invention of man. Alphabet is our creation. From With the alphabet we say God, we say world, we say everything. So it is we who have to explain what is God. So in the ashram that will take place. We will discuss the Upanishads here, Srimad Bhagavatam here and so many other Grindhas where the culture of the Hindu society, the spiritual wisdom, the spiritual pursuit, the spiritual fulfillment, everything about the human mind, human heart and the human intelligence, the inner personality will be exposed there. So it's a place of enlightenment. It's a place where knowledge will be pursued and promoted and disseminated. No society can live without it. This is the pillar. This is the conscience, spiritual conscience of the people. Everybody was happy. So I believe this has been the most profoundly significant event in my life. And all of you should understand, all these years I used to go out and talk to people what I got and gained from my devotion to him, closeness to him. Here now I go to my very root and source according to the wishes of the people, we have, we are reviving, rebuilding Purnashrama. We would like to give it an archaic look, different from the residential buildings. And when everything is over, we shall go and inaugurate. At that time, I, am, I expect that quite a number of people will come from various parts of the world, whoever knows us and whoever knows it will be a place to visit. 
to go and sit close your eyes and contemplate have a communion with your own heart mind more particularly the antaratma the inmost soul you can read your book chant beautiful hymns all these will have to be done there what will be done and how it will be done i cannot say the forthcoming days and years will prove it seems my baba had said many people from different parts of the country and world will arrive here about this i knew very recently this i, I had not heard so this is the relevance why i attached so much of importance to that place whenever i go to dakshin khanda again i would be going to a place sanctified by impregnated with the spiritual profundity of my gurudev the like of his is perhaps almost impossible to see so we will try to give as much of attention to that place and bring it up with a lot of fondness everything rests upon god and the people but i think the primary step of establishing an intimacy with the village and villagers and a few people have come forward to say we shall look after it the way you want this much has been done let us see i would like you to understand contemplate upon and discern what can guru bhakti mean in a human life when shankaracharya went to see govinda bada and govinda bada gave him diksha shankara's brilliant intelligence picked it up and he became a realized person i have heard that govinda bada told his son my dear shankara look all these sanskrit texts upanishads etc they have almost been eaten up by white ants for 1300 years buddhism flourished in this land and the whole vedanta and the upanishads sang into insignificance my dear son you have the potential to do so will you revive it i want it the young shankara said i shall try and then boy started walking through left and right up and down this great country of bharat met all the scholars engaged them in a debate proving to every one of them that the advaita vedantic message is the final in human life it marks the finale of philosophy finale of spirituality and finale of religious life everybody agreed i think it is something like that the adesha of a guru the wish of a guru the unconditional commitment and dedication towards a guru these are what impossible to describe the potential and magnitude these carry and how they work let us also see i am doing my little part okay hari hi om tat sat jay guru jay guru jay guru hari hi om tat sat